opening remarks. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Scott Loggenauer, and uh, welcome to the uh, webinar, Debriefing Your Run. Uh, we will go over some basics for post-election debriefing of a campaign. Uh, webinars such as this are among the tools offered by the Coordinated Campaign Committee of the Green Party of the, of the United States. Uh, and we organize uh, these seminars to help Green Party candidates organize campaigns uh, that help advance the Green Party's 10 key values and four pillars to make strong, strong impacts in elections, uh, serve the communities as public advocates, activists, and elected officials. Uh, the Coordinated Campaign Committee partners with state parties around the country to encourage, support, and help promote Green Party candidates. My name is Scott Loggenauer, as I said, and I'm the co-chair of the Coordinated Campaign Committee. I'm from Washington State. Uh, the webinar today will be led by Artis Bernie, who ran for Mississippi State Senate this year, and also by Christina Khalil, who is running uh, next year for U.S. Senate from New Jersey. I want to, in these opening remarks, acknowledge uh, both uh, both Artis and Christina's participation, as well as thanks for, for, for leading us through this webinar. We all learn as we go through, even the facilitators, we all learn uh, more about running effective campaigns by engaging in webinars such as this. Uh, Andy Ellis, who's from Maryland, will be working with me to monitor the chats in the background and to lead the lead the Q and A's. Um, we're planning to um, hold most of the Q and A's at the end of the session, but there might be occasions. Um, uh, to do so in between uh, breaks as Christina and uh, Artis are going through the presentation deck. Um, Andy will also offer closing remarks uh, and working behind the scenes to make sure all the technicals are working for the webinar um, is Holly Hart from Iowa. She's also of the Coordinated Campaign Committee. And this is a live webinar and um, it will be recorded so that it can be viewed later uh, from our website. We're asking audience members uh, to mute themselves uh, for the most part, um, and then use the chat feature to submit questions. Um, and make sure your Zoom profile gives us your name and where you're coming from, or at least within the body of the chat. Um, make sure we can identify you because we want to identify uh, where all the questions are coming from. And finally, the Coordinated Campaign Committee and the Green Party of the United States, uh, we rely on financial contributions from individuals who wish to see the party grow stronger. Uh, we encourage uh, you to become a monthly sustainer, and you can get more information on becoming a monthly sustainer on the gp.org website. Hopefully, very prominently on the homepage, there is a link uh, to give you more information for that. Uh, we thank you very much for your support. And now, without any further ado, I'm going to turn the webinar over to Artis and Christina while I mute myself and turn off the camera. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Christina or Artis, I'm not even sure who's going first, so I'm handing it over to both of you. Thanks again. Debriefing your run. Welcome to the GP US webinar, webinar series. Along with Christina Cahill, my name is Artis Bernie. I'm joining this call from the ancestral homeland of the indigenous Pascagoula in Van Cleef, Mississippi. Um, like to introduce you to my co-host, uh, Christina Khalil. Hi, um, I'm from New Jersey. Um, nice to meet you guys. Uh, next slide. Um, next slide, please. Who has the slides on their end? Oh, I apologize. It must be me. Now let me do that. Okay. What is debriefing? Debriefing is a systematic process to learn lessons from past action and activity within campaigns. 
Why is it important to debrief? It's important because we want to improve, understand the effectiveness of campaigns for your next run, for your local state or federal run, um, and for the rest of the Green Party. And who is involved, people who would be involved is core campaign leadership, like your coordinator, your manager, your assistant manager, the candidate. So does anybody have any um, lessons, you don't have to answer the questions now, but think about it toward um, during our question um, and answer discussion part of the session where any lessons you learned from past or current campaigning, any, um, what did you feel was effective? What did you feel was ineffective, uh, ineffective for your campaign practices? What advice you, would you give to people planning to run? What do you wish you, you told yourself before you ran or things you wish you knew before you ran? All right, how do we debrief? Next slide, please. Just how do we debrief? Okay. Uh, uh, hold on a second, I'm very sorry. <laughs> Let's get back here. Uh, my apologies. This is why we can get an editor. <laughs> That's okay. It gives a texture. Yes. <laughs> All right. How do we debrief? Face-to-face -face meeting? Ideally facilitated by a neutral third party. Half day minimally. Alternate between exploring different elements of, your, of the campaign versus the campaign overall can be supplemented by surveys of volunteers. Do it soon, do it soon. If too much time passes, people forget. Um, we have a saying down here in Mississippi where folks say, bless your heart. And we can tell the difference between the bless their hearts feeling. And um, <laughs> they really understand your campaign face-to-face -face with a face-to-face -face debrief by a neutral third party. Okay, go ahead, Christine. Um, I need the slides. I'm watching oh. as I'm doing this. <laughs> okay, sample agendas. So some sample agendas when you're doing introductions and you're discussing things, welcoming people, icebreakers are always great and they're fun. Um, a great way for introductions and overall positives, thinking about the whole campaign, what worked well, what were the successes? Uh, any new number of recruits, any new number of votes, experiences gained with social media, because um, social media is very important, key allies developed, um, how do these success matches the goals articulated at the beginning of the campaign? And what were your goals when you started it? Did you meet your goals or did you excel or did you not meet your goals if no goals were articulated this is a little difficult to do but usually people when they start campaigns they always have an idea of what they'd like so we want to review the number of votes the number of volunteers and donors the number of green party members the number of new donors amount of donations level of visibility achieved media hits any movement on any issues so um think of some questions and then at the end of this we will have a discussion Okay. Next is a sample agenda. Uh, 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 continued sample agenda is a brainstorm list of top elements you want to explore more deeply. Don't pick areas you really didn't have any activity in. For example, debriefing social media coverage if it was non-existent. Good to limit discussion to three to five top elements, top three to five elements. And if there's a lot of ground to cover, folks can vote with sticker dots, can discuss each element as a whole or in small groups. Okay, so sample agenda continued. Share the findings from small groups, have other group reactions, focus on the future. Um, and if we're going to, 
run again in two or four years, what would you do differently? Would you start now? What would your foundation look like? What was your previous foundation? What were the pros and cons of that? What would you build upon? And generate key takeaways and action items that can be used by local, state, or federal and future candidates. All right, campaign elements internal, volunteer recruitment, volunteer management, media, both traditional and social media, fundraising, events, compare turnout and vis uh, compare and contrast turnout and visibility, platform issues, website, literature, voter outreach, like phone banking and canvassing, GOTV, that's get out the vote, ballot access, debates, campaign management, and candidate selection. And those are some of the things that, like I mentioned in, the, in my previous slide, um, those are the things that you pick apart, each one of those, and discuss each one of those elements, um, what worked and what didn't work. Christine? Yeah. Campaign elements external. What were the strengths and weaknesses of the opposition? Ability to respond to changing conditions, um, an example of that would be like, say you had an outdoor event set up and then all of a sudden started raining or it was too hot. Um, how would you adapt to that change or would you prepare and have a tent set up in case, you know, it was going to rain? What lessons did you learn? Relationship to the Green Party, demographics and the history. All right, and takeaways. What did we learn that we can use next time? How was all the data generated going to be saved and used by the party for future runs? Because this is a chain. We want to keep this chain going. So this information for the next candidate that we're gonna support is going to be valuable. Um, volunteer contact information, donors contact information and donation history, votes for candidate, uh, where did the Green Party candidates do best at? Infrastructure and practices, leadership, and information about opponents. The opposition research, investigate your opponent's financial reports, which is good, where um, you're able to see where their donors came from. You could do it through the FEC, or um, I forgot the other website that I use where you can see if they get PAC money or mega donors who gave them the money, who is giving them endorsements, the history of the, the people giving them endorsement. What did they spend the money on? Where did they spend the money? Local vendors you may have missed, advertising opportunity. Oh, Open Secrets, that's the other website. Thank you. Um, advertising opportunities, events to table possible future conflicts um, to interest to the public and call them out. And then um, this is likely will be who you run against again next time around. Unless you're me, I don't know who I'm going to run against <laughs> until June. And be careful. Make this about actions and not people. Avoid assigning blame. Be realistic about time and capacity of group. And I just want to add, look at this as like an opportunity to stick your hands in an hourglass and recover some lost time. And in this time, in the mental picture, you do a little bit better. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, we'll take some questions now if anybody has anything. Um, thank you so much, uh, Christina and Artis. I have, um, I don't see any questions yet in the chat, but I have a question if I can put both of you on the spot. Sure. Uh, that because it's it's I find this very interesting that artists ran just uh, this year. Christina, you're preparing for a run next year, so I guess the first question is to artists: um, How has what have you learned through this webinar, preparing for this webinar, that you apply to your own campaign debriefing? Some of the key takeaways and Christina for the candidate who's going to be uh, running next year, um, I think it's probably a good idea as you're planning a campaign, or if anybody watching this is planning a campaign in the future, that it probably helps plan the campaign to know how you will debrief it a year from now. 
Um, so, but artists, how how have you debriefed your campaign from uh, uh, this year in your run for Mississippi State Senate? Well, what I had to uh, well, what I had to do was reimagine what what I thought. Um, I live in um, I was running for state senate here in my county, and um, I had to reimagine what I thought was um, a non was a, a non biased uh, group of people to review my campaign. Um, Oh, and, and also um, to get some people who were neutral um, to to help me build my, make my campaign better. Um, sometimes we have we we have a tendency to surround ourselves with people who agree with us. Um, and when we get into the heavy parts of the conversation, um, if 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 it's a if it's a thing where we are agreeing with every everything that somebody says, we end up t talking to the choir, and we don't we we we. We're not communicating. We're not communicating about, um, you know, um, about how to how to be better, about how to take best practices from this community and that community and that community. We tend to be talking about the same kind of people. So that's one thing um, to reexamine what I thought about as a um, honest third party, somebody that wasn't biased towards me. Great. And and Christina, you're about to run a campaign. How has learning a little bit about how a campaign is debriefed, helping you to plan your future campaign. And I'm asking this as I imagine people viewing this webinar now or watching a recording of it, some of them will be candidates who have just finished a campaign like artists, and some of them mm -hmm. will be candidates who are planning a future one like you. Yeah, so I actually started my campaign last year and my best advice with, with the briefing is start sooner you um, do not start the year off because you have to figure out that foundation and i've torn down my campaign and rebuilt it up like at least three or four times already um and because when it something wasn't working i had to go back and go to my team and be like okay we need to figure this out so we have to come up with new ideas and we are a team of very young people going for a very large um, prize at the end. And I have to tell people that there is a lot of ageism and there's a lot of sexism. Um, and, you know, you will face, I faced that already where I just got like down talked by a whole bunch of people where I'm just going in with policy solutions. And I'm like here for an interview to try and get an endorsement. And they just wouldn't take me serious the moment they saw me. Um, they were serious via email, so interested in meeting me. And the moment they meet me and saw me, they were just like, oh, so like, this is what you're going to experience. Like, are you sure you want to do this? This is who your opponent is. You know, you don't really have a lot of experience. And I'm like, I just gave you evidence that I have the experience and the knowledge. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's really nice. And I'm like, I'm not a child. I'm an adult. <laughs> so there's a lot of um, tribulations. And trials that will that you will meet, and then figuring out text banking, collecting the information of voters, because in the state of New Jersey you could get it for free. Um, working alongside, I have to say, with the Green Party of New Jersey, it was a blessing to meet them because they've been like a really great guidance and support, and really great teachers for me. Um, so that would be the debriefing. Also, self care. I cannot stress self 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 care um because once your campaign starts rolling it's it's going to be overwhelming especially like i can only speak for myself because i'm working two jobs and i'm doing this campaign full time so the exhaustion level is like through the roof so like you have to have to engage in self care like last week and i had two podcasts and then this weekend i have two other podcasts so it's just a lot going on, a lot. And then I have an in-person event also on Sunday where I'm going to be meeting some ex-mayors and and people that are interested to like kind of uplift us. So it's just like a lot going on, a lot, a lot. So self-care, self-care, self-care. Make sure you pace yourself if you're overwhelmed. Have your, your support where you're able to like reach out and and talk to them and, and even try and delegate. Cause I've even asked some of my team members, like, you know, if I'm overwhelmed and I can't, 
if I'm not feeling up to doing a podcast, can you guys speak in my place? Cause you are part of the, the campaign. So like, don't try and take everything on as a candidate. Like you have a team, you have people that want to see you win. You have people that understand your policy, definitely have them step forward. Cause if you're burnt out too early in the race, you're not going to make it halfway through. You're going to drop out. Great. Thank you, Christina and Artis for those answers. we got a couple of questions coming in in the chat. Um, first from Tyrell. He asks, uh, what would you guys do different uh, on startup knowing what you know today? Uh, Artis, you want to take that one first? <laughs> yes, please. Thank you. Um, I would make sure that I had. Um, um, I would make sure that I that I make sure that I touch all of these um, different campaign elements, the internal list make sure that I have a plan for each one of those and not just a plan for each one of those, make sure that I have someone other than myself to follow up on each one of those different topics. I think that's really important um, because now here at the, here at the uh, end of my campaign, I have, I have lots of information um, that I was using. Um, and um, I think it would have been better organized if better. Uh, I could have organized it better if I'd had uh, delegated those, uh, responsibilities you know uh with with other people um so the the fundraising the social media um ballot access setting up debates those should be you the candidate and another completely different person planning those out that way they can hold you accountable for following up mm -hmm. yeah, excellent really good advice and um, uh, christina how about you can you repeat the question again yeah sure um what would you do differently at startup knowing what you know today uh, knowing what I know today, I would have said to myself that focus more on fundraising. I think I would have, honestly, I would have probably started smaller, um, but my opponent is just such a, not a good person. So <laughs> I probably would have still went in full full throttle but I think I would have focused more on team building honestly and then having a discussion and figuring out I like I did research but I think I would have done more thorough research to to understand okay what do I really need how and and how do I do fundraising I do have um some people helping with fundraising um but I feel like I need more and then coming up with a better attack strategy um and yeah knowing what i know now i guess i have an idea i just don't want to say it. i will go in 110 percent that's what i'll say i'll give it 110 percent yeah no I mean, i'm not backing up now no no i mean you know we always we always have the opportunity to look back and what we see there uh, helps us to see what we do next, what we're going to do going forward. And so I appreciate that question from um, from Tyrell. We got a question. Um, we got Craig on the call um, who just recently ran a race and just finished. Um, Craig, do you want to briefly share some of the experiences you had and ask some questions for Artis and Christina? Hey, everyone. Sure. It's great to be here. Thanks for doing this. It's so important to get this information out to anybody that's uh, potentially thinking of running for office and know that there's support. There's support in each state. There's support nationally. You can always reach out to the CCC and ask for advice and any guidance. And we're always here to help each other. And that's one of the greatest parts about running for you know office as a green. I've been able to lean on some people over the you know previous years, and now hopefully we're able to you know guide others that are uh, going to run. So yeah, um, I'm also uh, one of our steering committee uh, chairs and state uh, Green Party New Jersey state co-chairs. I've run local in my town, Hawthorne, New Jersey, a few times for town council, and we have wards. So our town is uh, basically broken down to four wards, and those races are up every four years, and then in between there's three at-large council seats. So I've run for my ward um, technically now three times, uh, 2019, uh, then the incumbent passed away. So I had to do a special election in 2020 and then uh, this cycle. In between there was an at-large, so that helped get my name out there. But uh, yeah, I mean, this race was uh, a great race. Um, we ended up with 33.2% of the vote, uh, but it was a very low turnout year because in New Jersey, this is the off year. And uh, you don't get a lot of traction. You know, you really have to build 
inspire under your campaign to go and, and, and go forward. So, uh, you know, going back, the best advice I can give anybody running initially is, yes, that initial fundraising uh, out of the gate and having a plan. You definitely want to make sure your your social media accounts are all in line. It makes it easier to post stuff. You want to obviously build immediate ex excitement and exposure for the campaign. And I have a few bullet point issues that you want to focus on, no matter if it's local or a national race. And then from there, as you build support and donations, then your staff is going to come. But uh, in Hawthorne, you know, we did a great job. And by running consistently on issues for the last few cycles, the Democrats did not field a candidate in my ward. They literally left the line vacant. They didn't want to even deal with it because um, they knew that I was the strong enough candidate out there. And, and then basically that dispels this whole spoiler mystique that's out there and thrown in our face. Um, be because I've run consistently before, my messaging was the same. My signage was the same. So I was able to reuse a lot of my old materials and utilize them. So that saves also on having to, you know, spend more money. But yes, fundraising was needed to still send out, you know, targeted stuff. But uh, in the end, we got a lot more votes than expected in this depressed turnout. Uh, what I would do differently would be I need more events. Um, I think I, if I could have had a couple more events, I might have would have cracked through. And I am going to make an issue because in New Jersey, we do offer early voting. My town does not have early voting. So you would have to go out of town to even a neighboring town to do it nobody's really participating in that so even though we had a, a ballot drop box for, for for provisional or vote by mail early voting is necessary and i'm going to make that you know bring that light to, to to heat to everybody up real quick because i think that was some of the difference there because it was a, a weird time when they held this election with you know schools being off people taking vacations so um but yeah overall i i was happy with the vote turnout in the end it didn't go our way, but we are building through and breaking through and honestly earning the respect of Democrats and obviously as somebody's unaffiliated. In this race, there was three other candidates that ran as independents that normally wouldn't because they've seen the attention that I've brought running as an independent Green. So it, it, it there's going to be a breakthrough in, in Hawthorne, and I think it's going to happen next cycle. And, 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 you know, Craig, I think that's interesting because it makes you it seems like your race sounds a lot like Artis's race in some ways and that there was there's no Democrat in your race either. Right, Artis? What what was that like to it was you, uh, you a libertarian and, and a Republican? Yeah, that that's right. And, and that, you know, that that was that was uh, and that's because, you know. Um, the 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 um, the Democrat in the, the there. Democrats didn't feel like they had a chance. Um, you know, as, as the Green Party, we, we we represent some progress. We represent growth in America. You know, this two-party system, we represent growth. I mean, it takes some thick skin, but, you know, there are a lot of folks that um, that really agree with change and progress. And um, it, it's, it's, it, it's a cool connection to see that, to see us actually making progress like that. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, excellent. And and Christina, your race is not going to be like that at all. Your race is, has a very prominent Democrat uh, under multiple indictments running as the incumbent? Oh, yeah. So my race is a very special race. I don't think I've ever seen any any candidate race this extreme. It's like literally a mini version of the presidential race currently going on. I wish we were in national news, but I'm going against three corrupted Dems, and I actually wound up getting um some progressive Dems that said that not only said, but they have started quietly supporting me and down the road, they will be coming out publicly and they are going to be ushering other things. So it looks like we're about to split New Jersey completely and it's going to get even more chaotic. Um, I know spirit fingers, great, but I, so I'm in it for a long haul. I'm ready to, um, meet them at their level um like you know some say when they go low you go low no i'm kidding you go high i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm kidding guys you go high <laughs> um so but i think that it's going to actually be there there's a shot there's an actual shot of winning and i and talking with other people this is the easy work even though it's hard the hard work is 
actually when you win then you're like okay I won and now you're going and that's why I hope other greens win in 2024 because I need you guys to win with me because then I'm going into the White House into the district and I'm going to have the duopoly against me and if I don't have another green everything nothing's going to get passed you know, they they say that the the long hard work is building the party until you uh, get elected, and then the long hard work is governing, holding that power, and making substantial change for the people. Right? Yeah. I don't know if they really say that or not, but I do. So, um, <laughs> um, so we also have um, Doug from Connecticut, who is uh, on. Um, Doug, you ran a you ran a race recently with five other Greens. Do you want to talk about this real quick and uh, share a little yeah. bit of your experience here? Sure. Uh, I had far more than five greens. Uh, six of us won. Oh, five um, won in addition to you. Okay. Wow. Uh, we look for opportunities. One of the things I heard here and I just commented on was Craig and Artis are both running in races where there's an obvious weakness. A party is missing. In Christina's case, a party is damaged. And boy, I, I like that theme because we're there too. How did we get six people elected in a small town of 25,000 people? We looked for opportunities. We looked for where nobody else was paying attention, where nobody else was viable. Um, welcome, Michael. Good to see you. Uh, and and that helped us get some of the six victories. Um, they weren't glorious. They weren't Senate. They weren't president. They were just above dog catcher. But uh, it's still glorious. Yeah. You won. But, right. Well, and we've we've been doing this 20 years. So our town is not surprised. Start reasonable. Win reasonable races. Win races where nobody else is putting up a viable candidate. You can win those. Um, you know, Christina, yours sounded interesting. Art artists had a, well, it's me versus the 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 big choice but at least i'm getting heard because i'm everybody else um and i think that's a real potential for us uh, we do that in my town um we're not new at this we have these signs behind me are 12 years old um so you know we they're plastic but we reuse them uh, so uh but i like that theme that people are paying attention to where are the weaknesses of the competition where can we be helpful and if you never serve, it's hard to get elected to the next level of offices. Um, we've served as commissioners for 20 years, energy, charter revision, ethics, um, and planning and zoning. Uh, half the members in town have served, served on appointed roles on commissions where the Democrats and Republicans simply didn't offer to work. And so we did. Um, and that helps because you, you learn the process, you learn the people, and you begin to learn who's vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And so then we ran in races where people were particularly vulnerable. We did lose a terribly important race for town council. We, we had an endorsed candidate win one of the two seats we wanted. Our other incumbent did not get reelected and it was exceptionally painful. Um, you know, when, when you think you have an MBA in finance who can run a hundred million dollar, um, town and the voters say, yeah, but I want a stupid Republican or I want a stupid Democrat instead because they're my party that just plain hurts. And you wonder what could I have done better? So we're pretty good at winning races. We can win, but that was a hard one to lose because we've won it several times before. And this time we didn't, and we had the best candidate ever, a bright, intelligent, Pacific Island MBA in finance in a town where money matters. We're poor. And, and we didn't win that race. And not only did we not win, we didn't even come close to winning. And, and, it just, you know, I, I think one of, the, 
one of the things that I thought was really useful about this presentation was that when you're looking back at your campaign, sometimes you think something different in October than ends up happening on election day. Uh, and the debrief that uh, artist and Christina laid out here really gives a good set of tools for us to look back at that and figure out like what happened. Why did I? Why did I feel I, so? I, I like that. On... Set some goals because one of the goals we didn't track well was, hey, who's going to go knock on doors? Who's going to promote this candidate? Mm -hmm. You know, the candidate wound up in a job shift and that cut her availability to Canvas. And the, it was staggering how much more poorly she did than even the competition expected. They were running and scared of her. And you got and, a plan. You got a plan on what to do on things. And, Wow. When life happens, right? You got to plan on what. How does the campaign work if you have to change your job or if somebody in your family well, gets sick? Figure you know, if you have an MBA in finance, you can get offered six figure jobs, and they're hard to turn down. Yep. Oh, you know, like you know, for those of us who are semi retired or semi adequately well off, well, you you can cope with that temptation. But you know, if you're raising a family and you're the income earner in the household. That's hard to turn down. And, and we didn't yeah. have a backup plan for when our best candidate suddenly got employed. Excellent. Yeah, no, and, it, and that happens. And, you know, I thank you. Thank you for to Craig and Doug for those debriefs. I think those um, I think artists is telling us about what happened in her in his race. Christina's going to tell us about what happens in her race in a little bit. But hearing from those candidates that ran recently um, in the context of this debrief, I think, is really helpful. Um, so we're coming up on the and we have about 10 minutes left, I think. Um, so artists and Christina, is there anything that you want to leave um, uh, leave us with? I think we've had a good set of questions and a good um, set of discussion here. Yeah, I will say keep a very big open mind when you do run your race. Because I've had people reach out to me via email, and I actually reached out to the Green Party of New Jersey. People want to leave their parties, and they want to actually meet the other Green Party party members they've asked me ideas on policies so i'm actually getting voters to switch over and i've uh, and you know i haven't some people when i started this race they were just like oh if the republican don't don't bother with them um you know don't give them a time of their time of day because they're not going to be for the green party and i've actually i i kept an open mind when i was speaking with people and i'm like you know it's not about um, the party, it's about what we stand for. And I've actually seen Republicans defend me on social media. And I've spoken to some Republicans in person and they were just like, it's time for a third party. And I was even shocked where I'm just like, you guys understand we're progressive. Like we're about, you know, an ethical Green New Deal, moving away from fossil fuel. And they're like, no, yeah, we want a hybrid vehicle. We, we're down for hybrids. We're down for getting more more um, land. We need more affordable housing. I understand it's connected to to this. And I'm just like, oh my God. Like, you know, I never thought I'd have these conversations with, with, with Republicans. Like I had the, this idea, people kept telling me like, this is what you're going to get. And um, so, and it wasn't like that so far. Yeah, I've had some like extremists, but I, I've also met a lot of, progresses with where they're just like we want to leave and i and speaking to them i learned it's not just the democratic party that's broken in new jersey it's the republican party that's non-existent and broken too so it's a really good opportunity and it it's uh, i it's shocking that there's a strong chance that i actually could win speaking to other officials and speaking to other people in new jersey where that would be just like a miracle for the Green Party. And then us having more candidates running um, in 2024 with me, there are a lot of people that are excited because there's gonna be more than one Green Party member to vote for. Excellent. Well, Christina, thank you so much for, for sharing that. And um, those experiences sound like really transformative. And I hope that over the next uh, 11 months between now and Election Day and the 11 years after you get elected and get to uh, be the senator from New Jersey, we can hear you tell those stories about how offering a, a way outside of the two party changes people's views and, and actually gets people to change what they're doing. It's really inspiring. And we love I can't wait to hear about it when you debrief your campaign campaign next year. Artis, what do you want to leave us with? Um, just to remind people to um, 
make yourself accessible. Um, your constituency should should feel like they can use you to use you to express themselves. Um, and I think that encourages them to speak to each other about how they, the community, can use you. And everybody's focused on solutions instead of getting bogged down in problems collectively. That's just, that's it. Thanks. Absolutely. Thank you, artists. That, that is an inspiring vision of how we use campaigns to be part of communities. And I'm really excited to hear more of that from you over time. Scott, is there anything that you want to leave us with before I make a couple of closing remarks? Yes, thank you, Andy. And, and thank you, Artis and Christina. I just wanted to give a plug for um, the state of Connecticut and Douglas Larry being here, one of our more active CCC state party liaisons who ef after every election cycle, they do an absolutely fabulous job of debriefing uh, basically their overall strategy from local level and then on up. And they share with uh, the CCC a document. It's a lot of text, a lot of small point text. So I'm not going to share it on the screen here and, and put Doug on the spot or anything like that. But it's wonderful information. And I'm sure I would have Doug's permission to share it with any candidate or a state party who is interested and how um, their electoral activity uh, can both be, you know, critiqued and debriefed, but also preparing them for upcoming races, which is what this is all about. So I just wanted to to thank Doug for that and offer offer this. Just send an email to me at ccc at gp.org if you're interested in seeing the document from Connecticut. It's a great model for others. And um, I guess, Andy, we'll move on to your closing remarks. Excellent. Thank you, Scott. I really appreciate that. I appreciate uh, that comment um, and also just facilitating this great webinar tonight and the leadership of a committee that is putting on these type of events so that Greens all around the country have resources that they can turn to when they have questions about how do I how do I wind down my campaign? How do I start up my campaign? How do I campaign? These kind of resources and providing this type of thing is an essential service of the hard work of building small parties that can fight for justice, um, peace, democracy, and ecology. And so thank you so much for uh, your leadership on that. So, uh, and thank you to Christina and Artis for uh, giving the experience firsthand of candidates who are in the middle of it. Artis, I hope you're at the sort of recovery end of it a little bit, getting back to life a little bit. Uh, and Christina, I know you're getting into a really busy time. So um, keep that self-care regime up. And um, I want to offer a few thoughts in closing. And these are themes that are part of my potential 2026 campaign here in Maryland. Uh, and then I try to incorporate into all of my political and organizing work. I also think they're helpful for we're thinking about in terms of this debrief. First one is speak clearly, lead with the truth, and talk to everyone. Your debrief is not the election night party. I think Art has touched on this. You need folks that are going to be there and not tell you how great you did on the most exhausted day of your life, but tell you uh, the real truth about what happened with your campaign. Create a space where people can be open, honest, and share their feelings. But be sure to do so in a constructive way that builds our movement and our party. We don't want anybody angry at each other, but we do want people to have the space to be honest, speak with truth, uh, and talk to everyone. The second thing is run a positive, healthy, and inclusive campaign, and that includes through the debrief. Um, it, the campaign doesn't stop at the end of the election night. It doesn't stop at the end of the, the, end of the election party. You have your debrief. Campaigns should be fun and energizing, even if they're hard and exhausting. Debriefing soon is important, but give yourself and everyone else the opportunity to get over the adrenaline and the exhaustion that comes with running a campaign. They need to catch up on life. They need to get over their frustrations. And then once that's happened, bring people back into a space that is positive, healthy, and inclusive for the debrief so that they can share honestly and openly, but they're not running on adrenaline or they're not dealing with six doctor's appointments they skip during the campaign. Don't skip your doctor's appointments during the campaign. Um, but they're not trying to deal with the job change or anything like that. No. Uh, the third thing here is that each of our campaigns are part of the process of transforming the Green Party to forever meet the moment of crisis that we have and the moment of opportunity that we have. Campaigns are the way that we express the collective power of voters but behind our values and in support of our solutions. They are the main way we teach voters about the party. As you're planning your campaign, executing that plan, and running your race, always keep a focus just past Election Day to the debrief and think about what you want to be able to say and share that you accomplished at your debrief. 
no matter the result, when the campaign ends, plan for the end of it, but plan for everything else uh, that comes before that based on what you want to be able to say at the end. What is it that you what is it that you want to be able to tell people that you accomplished for missing those six doctor appointments that you shouldn't have missed um, and for sacrificing all the time and energy and money that you've put into this? These campaigns are intense and expensive things, and you want to be able to know what you're trying to get out of it. So think about when you start your campaign, what you want to be able to say you accomplished at the end of your campaign. That may be winning the office, that may be building community, that may be changing policy, whatever it is. Think clearly about those goals and think about uh, think about them, you know, at the hard times and at the good times, that that's what you're moving for. So uh, those are sort of my thoughts on this. And I really appreciate everybody's contribution tonight. It was great to have um, some voices from the crowd of folks that have run a lot of races. Thank you, Craig and Doug. Uh, and thank you, Holly, for doing the tech work in the background. This concludes tonight's debriefing uh, your campaign webinar. The Coordinated Campaign Committee produces webinars regularly on various topics. Early next year, we'll host a webinar on using social media effectively, and it will be led by my fellow Marilyn Green, Nancy Wallace. And please, again, consider supporting the committee, becoming a monthly sustainer to the Green Party of the United States, and making financial com contributions direct to candidates that you support. Uh, again, we do not take corporate or lobbyist funds, so support from individuals who share our values is essential to being able to build the message. If we know that the biggest thing stopping the Green Party from succeeding and implementing its, its program and uniting communities that have felt left out and not responded to is the lack of resources that we have compared to the other parties. We know that we need to make sure that people give what they can. We can't expect billions of dollars or millions of dollars or whatever, but if you have five, 10, 15 dollars to give to a candidate, give it to a Green Party candidate. Uh, so with that, I, I think we're done and I thank everybody for being here tonight. Thank you all. Go green. Thank you all. Thank you. Very nice, everybody. Some guns are traveling.